why nobody lives in Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington, or Idaho. Did you know that despite the expansive forests and rainy shores of the western coast of the United States, the population in the Pacific Northwest remains surprisingly sparse? Home to approximately 14 million people, this area is a study in contrasts, not only in its geography and climate, but also in how its population is distributed. While one might assume that the population is evenly spread across this verdant and diverse landscape, the reality is starkly different. A significant majority, about 72% of the region's inhabitants, live west of the Cascade Mountain Range, a towering line of peaks that runs north to south and serves as a natural divide between the eastern and western parts of the region. This has left the vast expanses of eastern Oregon, eastern Washington, and Idaho with a remarkably lower density of human settlement which raises intriguing questions about the factors at play. But why does this contrast exist? And why does nobody live in Eastern Oregon, Eastern Washington, or Idaho? The disparity in population distribution can be traced back to various geopolitical, historical, and economic reasons. So, let's get into it. Historical Context First off, the historical narrative of the Pacific Northwest has primarily been shaped by the forces of nature the indigenous people, and the ambitions of European explorers and settlers. For example, the Missoula floods were pivotal in shaping the region's geography and subsequent human history. Occurring at the end of the last ice age, approximately between 13,000 and 15,000 years ago, these catastrophic floods were triggered by the rupture of ice dams holding back Lake Missoula. The floods unleashed immense volumes of water across what is now eastern Washington, carving out the unique geological features we see today, such as the channeled Scablands and the Columbia River Gorge. This event laid down fertile soil and created landscapes that would later support the agriculture and settlements of the area's inhabitants. Before European arrival, the Pacific Northwest was home to various indigenous tribes, each adapting to and interacting with the diverse ecosystems created by the region's complex geography and climate. These tribes, including the Chinook, Nez Perce, and Salish, developed cultures deeply connected to the land. They engaged in fishing, hunting, and agriculture, utilizing the rich resources of their territories. Their societies were characterized by a mix of sedentary and nomadic lifestyles, influenced by abundant natural resources and seasonal cycles. The allure of the Pacific Northwest to European explorers was initially sparked by the quest for the Northwest Passage, a fabled sea route across North America that would offer a quicker path to the riches of Asia. This quest brought figures like James Cook and George Vancouver to the region's shores in the late 18th century. Their explorations mapped the coastline and initiated the first contact with indigenous people, laying the groundwork for future trade, especially in fur, which attracted European powers and the United States to the area. The 19th century was marked by increasing territorial disputes over this strategically and economically valuable region. The presence of European traders and settlers intensified competition most notably between the British Empire and the emerging United States. The pivotal Lewis and Clark expedition, commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson from 1804 to 1806, marked a significant American effort to assert claim over the territory and explore routes for westward expansion. The competition for control of the land culminated in the Oregon Treaty of 1846 which drew the boundary along the 49th parallel, shaping the future states of Oregon, Washington, and Idaho. This treaty resolution reflected the geopolitical ambitions of the time and set the stage for the development and settlement that would follow. The establishment of these states within the Union marked the beginning of a new chapter in the Pacific Northwest's history. Oregon, Washington, and Idaho's ascension to statehood in the mid to late 19th century paved the way for growth spurred by the timber industry, agriculture, and the discovery of minerals. Now, the imposing cascades invite us to discover how they've shaped life on either side. The Great Divide The Cascade Mountain Range is a formidable natural barrier stretching from Northern California through Oregon and Washington and into British Columbia, Canada. Its towering peaks, including Mount Rainier, 
Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens are iconic landscapes and pivotal in shaping the climate, ecosystems, and human activities across the Pacific Northwest. This range, part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, is renowned for its volcanic activity, with many of its mountains being volcanoes, some of which are active. The presence of these mountains has a profound influence on the region, creating a clear division between the eastern and western parts of the Pacific Northwest. This division is most evident in the dramatic contrast in climate between the two sides of the Cascades. To the west, the mountains act as a shield that traps moist air from the Pacific Ocean. This creates a wet maritime climate with abundant rainfall and mild temperatures year-round. This has, in turn, created a vast expanse of forest. Towering stands of Douglas fir, western hemlock, and red cedar cover the landscape, a testament to the region's conducive climate. These forests have provided habitat for a wide array of wildlife and supported human endeavors, most notably the timber industry. Logging has been a cornerstone of the economy since European settlers first arrived. Drawn by the seemingly inexhaustible timber supply, agriculture, too, has flourished west of the Cascades, largely thanks to the fertile soils left by ancient geological events, including volcanic eruptions and the Missoula floods. The valleys and plains here, especially the Willamette Valley in Oregon, are among the most productive agricultural lands in the nation. The natural wealth of the Western Pacific Northwest has also given rise to major urban centers, which have become hubs of culture, commerce, and innovation. Seattle, Portland, and Tacoma are the most prominent among them, each with its own unique character, but all sharing a deep connection to their environmental roots. On the eastern side of the Cascades, the scenario changes dramatically due to the rain shadow effect. Here, the mountains block the passage of moist air, leading to a much drier, semi-arid climate that receives significantly less precipitation. This shift in climate conditions results in very different ecosystems with expansive grasslands, sagebrush steppes, and pine forests dominating the landscape. The drier conditions east of the Cascades has also given rise to distinct economic activities, notably mining, logging, and agriculture, although of a different nature than found in the West. Mining, in particular, has played a significant role in the region's sparse population, with the discovery of gold, silver, and other minerals driving mining corporations to settle here. While the mining boom times have passed, the industry still contributes to the sluggish growth of the area. Urban development and transportation have faced unique challenges here. The vast distances, rugged terrain, and lower population density have made establishing and growing urban centers more difficult than in the more densely populated and geographically compact West. Beyond mountains, we find borders that tell their own stories of isolation and uniqueness. Geopolitical anomalies. Point Roberts, Washington, embodies one of the most intriguing geopolitical anomalies in North America. This small, unassuming enclave of the United States is situated on the southernmost tip of the Sawasan Peninsula. Yet, it is paradoxically cut off from the mainland U.S. and accessible directly only through Canada or by water. The story of Point Roberts began in the Oregon Treaty of 1846, an agreement meant to settle ongoing territorial disputes between the British Empire, which controlled what is now Canada, and the United States. The treaty stipulated that the border between the two territories would extend along the 49th parallel west from the Rocky Mountains to the Strait of Georgia, aiming to provide a clear boundary. However, due to a lack of detailed geographical knowledge at the time, the negotiators did not realize that extending the 49th parallel in this manner would isolate a small piece of land south of the parallel, inadvertently creating the exclave of Point Roberts. It was only when surveyors later mapped the area more accurately that the full implications of the treaty's terms became apparent. Despite its peculiar location, Point Roberts became part of the United States, a decision embedded in international borders to this day. Due to the challenges of living here, this area is sparsely populated. Life and logistics in Point Roberts are uniquely shaped by its status as an isolated territory. 
Residents of this small community, which spans just about five square miles, live a lifestyle marked by the constant crossing of international borders for many of life's necessities and conveniences. School children and workers commute through Canada to reach other parts of Washington state. Groceries and goods often come through the border. And even emergency services have agreements to operate across this international boundary. This daily interplay between the two nations is facilitated by border checkpoints operated by both the United States and Canadian border agents, making Point Roberts one of the most challenging places to live. For instance, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the closure of the Canadian border posed significant challenges for the residents, highlighting the vulnerabilities of their dependence on cross-border access for essential services and connections to the mainland United States. Now, looking forward, let's explore how these lands are quietly shaping their future. Looking ahead, as we look towards the future, the Eastern Pacific Northwest stands at a crossroads of potential demographic shifts and economic development. Recent years have signaled a quiet transformation with cities like Boys, Spokane, and Bend emerging as burgeoning hubs that defy the historical narrative of sparse population and limited economic diversity in the region. These trends suggest a nuanced future where the East could see significant changes in both its demographic landscape and its economic foundations. The growth trends in the Eastern Pacific Northwest are partly fueled by a combination of affordable housing, a high quality of life, and an increasing array of job opportunities, drawing people from more densely populated and expensive areas to the West. Boys, for example, has experienced rapid population growth, emerging as a tech and innovation center that retains its roots in agriculture and manufacturing. Spokane and Bend have similarly benefited from their appeal to those seeking a balance between urban amenities and access to the great outdoors, fostering growth in sectors like healthcare, education, and tourism. This influx of new residents and businesses suggests a potential for significant demographic shifts. As the population becomes more diverse and the economy more varied, the region could see a transformation in its social fabric, with new ideas, cultures, and innovations mingling with long-standing traditions. Such changes may also spur further economic development, as a larger, more diverse population can support a wider range of services, industries, and cultural activities. While challenges related to infrastructure, environmental sustainability, and social cohesion may arise, the trends indicate a vibrant future marked by dynamic growth, economic diversification, and an evolving demographic landscape. In navigating these changes, the region could become a model for balancing growth with the preservation of its unique environmental and cultural heritage. And there you have it, the reasons why the Pacific Northwest is sparsely populated. How did you feel about the unique characteristics and potential future of this region? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please drop a comment below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful explorations.